Hey coin collectors and numismatic enthusiasts, welcome back to CoinUs. In this episode, we are going to look into highly sought after US coins that make big money at auctions. Some of them might be in your coin collection. Hit that subscribe button below and let's get started. Number 16, starting with this 1974 Kennedy Elf dollar. At first glance, it looks like an ordinary circulated 50 cent piece, but under close inspection you can see that the date on obverse and United States of America on the reverse is impressed very tight against the rims. This is because it's a result of mint slip up. An error coin struck on a Taiwanese $5 planchette with metal composition of 75% copper and 25% nickel and weight of over 9 grams. Graded as AU55, this error half was sold for $2,880 on September 18th, 2023. Number 15 here is 1968 D. Lincoln cent with obvious mint error. Penny overstruck on a 1968 Panaman 1 centesimo. The remnants of undertype is fady, but can be distinguished on both sides. This extraordinary cent was graded as MS63 by NGC, and it was sold for $5,040. Number 14. Next. 1965 Jefferson Nickel from Special Mean Set, graded as SP67 Deep Cameo by PCGS, ranked in the 100 Greatest US Modern Coins by Scott Schechter and Jeff Garrett. Only a few dozen 1965 Jefferson Nickels exist with the highly contrasted Deep Cameo finish, and few of those are as brilliantly mirrored as this example. Struck during a three-year period, from 1965 through 1967, these rare and coveted pieces stand in stark contrast to the mass production of small change during that period in US coinage, when US Mint nearly matched the total production of previous 1968 years in one short three-year span. This SMS nickel ended up selling for $5,287.50. Number 13, here is undated Lincoln Cent impressed on a struck Roosevelt dime, graded in mint state 67 by NGC. Cent struck over dimes are scarce but can be found with patience. However, a cent struck 50% of center over a struck dime is a true rarity. The present lot is ranked number 92 in Whitman's 100 Greatest US Error Coins. It is the most dramatic of the few off center double denominations known with nearly perfect 50% of center strike. The cent strike overlaps the dime date and mint mark, and the date and the mint mark portion of the cent is off the flan. It was sold for $7,637.50. Number 12 here is 1972 Lincoln cent with double diverse. Graded in mean state 67 plus red by PCGS and further endorsed by CAC. A George's fire red and olive green superb gem. Both sides appear devoid of contact and carbon is virtually absent. Among Lincoln's sands, only 1955 FS101 exhibits more prominent dye doubling than 1972 FS101. Other double dye varieties are known for 1972 but none compare with guidebook listed FS101. These rare scent ended up selling for $9,600. Number 11, this is 1979 as Susan B. Anthony Dollar struck on a copper scent planchette. It is highly elusive and valuable error coin. This type of error occurs when there is a mistake in the minting process where the wrong planchette is fed into the coin press. Instead of receiving the proper coin composition, a copper cent planchet is used. This extraordinary error coin ended up selling for $8,700 on September 18, 2023. Number 10 here is 1916D Mercury Dime Broad Struck, graded as extremely fine 45 by NGC. In numismatics, a broad struck error refers to a type of coin error that occurs during the minting process when a coin is struck without being properly aligned within the coining chamber. This results in a coin not being fully contained with the collar, which is a ring-like device that helps shape the coin and ensures that 
it is struck with correct dimensions and edge design. Instead, the coin is struck with excessive force and spreads or expands beyond the intended size and shape. These broad struck Mercury Dime fetched a sum of $9,000 on September 18, 2023. Number 9. This is 1966 Jefferson Nickel in MS65 condition with full steps. In spite of massive numbers of nickels struck in 1966, very few qualify for full steps. According to heritage auctions, fewer than 1 in 150 coins are estimated to have this degree of definition on the reverse. The light golden surfaces display silky satin-like mint luster and are free of major abrasions. These collector's item ended up selling for $11,750. Number 8. Here is 1976D Type 1 Eisenhower dollar. In MS67 condition, the Type 1 design is recognized by the thick letters in the reverse legend. This delightful superb gem displays vibrant mint luster on both sides, and the flawless surfaces are enhanced by shades of pale gold toning. The design elements are sharply detailed throughout and eye appeal is outstanding. It was sold for $11,162.50. Number 7. This is 1976S. Jefferson Nickel was of worse impression struck into a center of a clad Ike dollar planchet. The guidebook lists the weight of a clad Eisenhower dollar as 22.68 grams. A clad Eisenhower dollar planchet with raised rim was centered between a proof 1976 S Jefferson nickel of worst die and an undetermined reverse die. The strike was soft, though the right side of worst legends are clear, and the portrait is well outlined except for Jefferson's nose. The reverse exhibits outer portions of an undetermined design. It was sold for $13,200. Number 6. Here is 1968s Lincoln cent bonded with Costa Rican 5 centimos blank, graded in mint state 63 red by PCGS. The San Francisco mint struck 1967 dated 5 centimos for Costa Rica. The 1968 mintage was 6 million and 20,000 pieces, and the 1968 mintage was 4 million 840,000. Pieces. The stainless steel coins had a diameter of 14.92 mm. The San Francisco also struck Lincoln cents during 1968, with the S mint mark appearing for the first time on the denomination since 1955. The 5 centimos blank and Lincoln cent planchet were fed together between 1968 S cent dies. The 5 centimos blank was fed on top of the cent planchet relative to the obverse die with the edges of two flans aligned at 730. Number 5 here is 1965 Washington quarter struck on a silver planchet, graded in mint state 62 by PCGS. A transitional error struck on a leftover silver planchet from 1964. Errors of this type are rare. This piece is satiny with ivory white luster and minimal abrasions for the grade. Slight strike softness is seen on the finer details of Washington's portrait. It was sold for $16,800. Number 4, another 25 cent piece, 1976 S Bicentennial Quarter in Mint State 69. Even under a magnification, the exquisite preservation of this modern silver clad piece is highly impressive. The subtlest hints of champagne patina are seen over the obverse, while the reverse is essentially untoned. Though the net mintage for the 1976 S silver clad business strike is speculative, its rarity in MS 69 is undeniable. It was sold for $19,200. Number 3. This is 1966 quarter dollar in mint state 68 plus. Vividly toned specimen, virtually flawless surfaces and boldly rendered devices complement the satiny clad luster of each side, while a wash of dusky rainbow toning produces unparalleled visual appeal. It was sold for $21,000. Number 2. This is lot of 1941 Walking Liberty a half mated pair. Coin number 1 is 1941 half double struck. 
second strike, 90% of center. It was graded as AU58 by NGC. Coin number two is a 1941 half struck in a quarter planchet with edge brocage, graded as AU58 by NGC as well. The two coins have consecutive certification numbers. The second coin weighs 6.3 grams, similar to the standard 6.25 grams weight of a silver quarter. This pair fetched a sum of $24,675 at auction. Number 1. And this is 1950 Lincoln Cent in PR67 red condition. According to NGC's currency coins are often mistaken for proofs. A touch-up of the obverse master hub resulted in a greater detail than seen in earlier Lincoln cents, and a circulation strike from fresh dies is nearly equal to a proof. Despite these improvements, sales of proof cents continue to slide, and fully red gems of this date are very rare. NGC certified just five specimens in this grade with non-finer. It was sold for $187.50 with buyer's fee. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to smash thumbs up and subscribe buttons before you watch another video on YouTube. Until the next time, and stay well.